Omaha residents hope a rare mountain lion finds new hunting ground after being spotted on home security footage. Thanks for joining us. I'm Julie Cornell. I'm Bill Shammer. We were the first to bring you this video. It was captured early this morning near 114th and Q Streets. Nebraska Game and Park says they have not found the animal yet. KETV News Watch 7 Sean McKinnon has their response plan plus reaction from neighbors. He joins us live with tonight's big story. Just 18 hours ago, a mountain lion was walking where I am now, a neighborhood between La Vista and Millard. The cat has not been found yet, but if it is, Nebraska Game and Park says it'll be forced to take drastic measures. Video caught on Ring Doorbell, a mountain lion strolling through a neighborhood by I-80 and Q Streets around 415 Monday morning. It was actually seen just over there. Oh, seriously? Yes. I went for a walk this morning, but I didn't see it. Word spreading throughout the quiet community that the big cat made its way into the metro. I mean, I don't know how it got this far in. You know, who knows if it can find its way back to where it originated. Nebraska Game and Parks has confirmed the sighting was a mountain lion. Mountain lion's a new one I'd heard of, but not going to stop my regular routines of walking on the trail like I like to do. They say they have protocols, and if the cat is found within Omaha city limits, they will kill it for public safety. Some neighbors are understanding of the measure. You know, I'm an animal lover, nature lover kind of person, but I do think that would probably be the best way to handle that. You can't blame them for going in that direction. Uh, I mean, it would be nice to take a more humane stance toward it, I suppose, but you don't always get that choice. Nebraska Game and Parks reminds people that mountain lion attacks are rare. People hope the community and the cat both walk away unscathed. I mean, I see people walking there all the time and, you know, kids out there. You never know if something like that could turn into, you know, something tragic. If you do happen to see the mountain lion, Game and Park says use common sense. Don't approach it. Back away and go inside a car or house. Reporting live, Sean McKinnon, KETV News Watch 7. Okay, thank you, Sean. We have a Crime Stoppers alert tonight. Omaha police named the two men found shot inside a car. We brought you that breaking news last night. It was live from the Citadel Apartments off 86th Parkway and Q Streets. Police say 28-year-old Luis Romero Rodriguez died. They say a 24-year-old man is still in the hospital with serious injuries. The parents of Rodriguez say they know little about his friend and what the two were doing in the area. If you know anything about the shooting, call Crime Stoppers 402. 444 stop. A Cedar County judge agrees to delay the case against this woman accused of helping her husband in a quadruple homicide. Carrie Jones faces first degree murder, accessory, and tampering with evidence charges. The judge approved a request by her defense to delay the case until November. She's accused of killing 86 year old Jean Twyford last year in Laurel. Her husband, Jason Jones, is also charged in the killing of Twyford, along with his wife, daughter, and Michelle Eveline. Staying in the courts, this Omaha man who told police demonic visions drove him to break into a Bellevue family's home waves his preliminary hearing. Austin Hall faces multiple felonies, including attempted murder and burglary. Police say Hall broke into a house last month near 27th Street. They say he choked a 24 year old. The 24 year old choked a teenager inside. He'll be back in court next month. Omaha's Blue Barn Theater is targeted by burglars twice in a week. Well, police say someone stole hundreds of dollars worth of tools and drinks. And then days later, a man was caught on camera walking into the building. KTV News Watch 7's Alex McClune shows us the video in tonight's report. A couple of break-ins alarm one of Omaha's premier professional feeders. It was not a call that I expected, nor, uh, yeah, it did not make me happy. Blue Barn board member Susan Clement and staff were on vacation when police received an alert about a man entering the theater last Thursday, then leaving about two minutes later, leading police to believe nothing was taken. It's just a, a shocking thing to, to know that somebody would actually break into a nonprofit, but I don't think that this person or people are uh, art lovers. How about if I say that? <laughs> The incident follows another break in Monday, July 17th, when police say someone stole about $250 worth of tools and alcohol from inside. But a few of the people who actually came into work Monday morning were the ones who found the garage door open. Police say cameras only captured the second break in, showing this man, someone the theater says the neighborhood is keeping an eye out for as they prepare to open for the next season. The art in Omaha is thriving, and that's uh, 
that's an important thing. So we'll take this with a grain of salt and move forward and hopefully, ca hopefully catch the people, right, that did this. Alex McClune, KETV News Watch 7. Okay, to the weather now, we have a live look at 90th and West Dodge tonight from our SkyCam network. Chief Meteorologist Bill Ramby's live with the upfront forecast. Bill. Julie, yeah, some clouds out there tonight. Temperature staying pretty warm. Nice look at downtown here from our camera at the Embassy Suites on 10th Street. Look at the old market. Beautiful. 81, Epley Airfield, southeast breeze 11, dew point 73. Temperatures into the 70s for most of western Iowa, but still a lot of low 80s in eastern Nebraska. Fremont's 80, York is 81. Dew points, they're up there. They're in the 70s. That's when we like to call it the don't point. Get it? That's a joke. You see, it's sticky. It's uncomfortable. It's muggy. A little southeast breeze at about 10, 12 miles an hour. No rain on Super Doppler 7 radar, but some clouds will hold the temperature up along with that muggy air. But no storms to deal with tonight like we had last night and early this morning. We will have more cloud cover Tuesday afternoon, maybe keeping us out of the excessive heat, but that is on the way for Thursday, Wednesday, and maybe Friday too. Here's the 12-hour forecast. You see the increased cloud cover and the warm temperatures. Bill and Julie. Bill, thank you. As the extreme heat continues, multiple groups are helping people find shelter. The Salvation Army has three cooling centers. Those are here on your screen. Bottled water will also be offered, and you can find the times that each center is open and information about the Sal Salvation Army's boxed fan program. Go to salarmyomaha.org. The Siena Francis House, they also have a cooling center open there. Any day there's a heat advisory, that is on North 18th Street. To learn more, at siennafrancis.org. More mental health services are coming to Council Bluffs. Methodist Jenny Edmondson Hospital is partnering with Acadia Healthcare to build a new hospital. Methodist says there's a shortfall of more than 300 inpatient behavioral health beds in Iowa and Nebraska. The new facility will have almost 100 beds and 24 inpatient beds. They'll announce a location at a later date. They hope to open the hospital in 2026. Nebraska's governor creates a new group to examine property valuations. The new Valuations Reform Working Group includes Governor Jim Pillen, several state senators, the Omaha and Lincoln Chambers of Commerce, and the state chamber. Pillen says increases in Nebraska have become, quote, an unbearable burden for homeowners, businesses, and ag producers. Back to school shoppers, listen up. Iowa's annual tax-free days are coming up. The holiday is August 4th and 5th. There's no sales tax on clothes or shoes as long as the items are under $100. It does not include jewelry, sports equipment, or school supplies, but the holiday does include online sales. And as you do your school shopping, consider picking up an item for a child in need. The 7 Can Help Kids Back to School Backpack Program is looking for these supplies. You can drop them off now through Sunday, August 6th in our blue collection barrels. They're all across town. You'll find those at Methodist Urgent Care, Metro Credit Union, Cubbies and Salvation Army locations. Next at 10, the growing movement to ban the government use of Chinese made drones. Why some law enforcement officers are against it.
Six-month investigation into drones and national security. There's a growing number of lawmakers who want to ban the government use of Chinese-made drones. They're worried the devices could spy on our electrical grid, military bases, and more. But there's a twist. Some of the people you'd think would be supporting drone bans the most are actually against the idea. Chief National Investigative Correspondent Mark Albert has this drone defense report. He is off his meds and he wants to have a shootout with law enforcement. A shots fired call in northwest Arkansas in May. All he said to me was he wasn't going to put his gun, air rifle, whatever it is down. That's it. Sebastian County deputies respond. Get behind the car for cover. He's moving. He's moving. But instead of going in. We're going to get that drone airborne. Deputy Trevor Massey launched his personal drone for a peek. Get out. We'll back away. We'll let the drone do a couple passes. So without this drone? We would have put ourselves in harm's way without this drone. But deputies found no immediate threat and left. And it just made a very unsafe ver situation a whole lot safer. But after July 31st, his department and all government agencies in Arkansas cannot buy that drone because it's made by DJI, a Chinese company. A new state law says drones made by any Chinese or Russian company cannot be purchased with taxpayer money and those already in use have to be grounded within four years. You viewed it as a homeland security risk? I did. Senator Justin Boyd and Representative Britt McKenzie, both Republicans, wrote the Arkansas drone ban bill, now signed into law. I think it's important that when you have a Chinese military funded organization and they control 80% of the market, you have to give other opportunities out there uh, for privacy and security. Chinese main drones pose a threat. We're ahead of the curve in terms of other states and other legislatures that are taking up this issue. Government drone bans are in fact a growing trend. Just this year, Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Florida all adopted some form of government drone bans. And in each state, the drones registered to law enforcement are almost all Chinese made according to data obtained by the National Investigative Unit from the Federal Aviation Administration. Alabama is considering such a ban. Nearly all law enforcement drones there are Chinese made too. Four bills in Congress include drone bans, after lawmakers warned in hearings, letters and statements of China, quote, stealing our data using drones. The U.S. military and the Departments of State and Interior already banned buying Chinese made drones. In a 2021 executive order by then President Trump said use of foreign made drones, quote, may allow sensitive data transferred out of the country. Even more agencies should ban them, according to Brian Harrell, a former assistant secretary for infrastructure protection at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. We spoke to him at the University of Maryland's Southern Maryland Autonomous Research and Technology Innovation Center. They're Chinese manufactured, they're Chinese made, and we're seeing a lot of data leave proprietary IT systems and go overseas to a nation state adversary that doesn't like the United States. Let me make sure I understand this. What have you seen with your own eyes that data about sensitive sites in the US has been transmitted back to China? Yes. You hesitated. Well, I did, yes. Um, Why? Because you know, I'm no longer with the government, I'm not in that space. Um, but I can say that wearing my previous hat, I've seen a number of incidents and critical infrastructure companies reporting to the U.S. government that this information, their information, has potentially been stolen. And the mechanism was DJI drones. Sir, is the Chinese government using your drones to steal data here in the U.S.? No, that's simply not true. Adam Welsh is the head of global policy for DJI. We've had numerous audits for cybersecurity and data security audits that show no data is going back to China. Some of those audits we actually paid for ourselves, but other audits were either uh, undertaken by the U.S. government using Idaho National Labs or the Department of Interior, which used NASA and others to vet our products. In all cases, they found that no data was going back to China. So the evidence is definitely on our side. So I wonder if you can help us understand the DJI privacy policy, the subheading international transfers of personal data, quote, your information collected by DJI may be transferred to and accessed by DJI entities and business partners globally. Can data from the U.S. be transmitted overseas to China? So the, in the only case where data would be transferred to China and you would be notified of this fact is if there were some sort of uh, warranty issue or there were some sort of malfunction with the drone. Did the state give you any new drones to use? 
Uh, absolutely not. Did they give you any money to buy new drones? No. Did they offer to buy back any drones you might have? No. Hobie Runyon, sheriff in Sebastian County, Arkansas, where his deputies, small DJI drone, recently protected deputies on a shots fired call, says the new ban on Chinese-made drones in his state is a waste of taxpayer money. And it got him thinking of a way out. I'm looking at alternative uh, measures. You found uh, a loophole? Possibly. And you're going to use that loophole to Absolutely. buy a Chinese-made drone? Exactly. Nobody can ever accuse me of not uh, supporting our nation, our community, and I would absolutely do what I can to get the best product, the best service to our citizens as I can. A tactical decision to protect a community that some fear comes with a strategic cost to the homeland. Next week, the FAA will hold its annual drone symposium, bringing together government and industry leaders in Baltimore. On the agenda, drone security and how to protect critical infrastructure from drone-related threats. In Washington, Mark Auer, KETV Newswatch 7 Investigates. In full disclosure, our company uses drones made by DJI for news gathering purposes. One was used in this story. We regularly evaluate our news gathering equipment and review our policies for use. Our investigation continues online right now where you can watch extended interviews, interact with key drone data, and watch our entire drone defense series all at KETV.com. From Omaha's weather leader, Chief Meteorologist Bill Ranby with your accurate weather now forecast. Rainby Factor time for Tuesday. Tuesday, five tolerable. A slight chance of a shower, some clouds, and a little bit hot in the afternoon. There's a heat advisory. Really, we need it for Wednesday and Thursday. That's when the afternoon heat index values could be up to 105 or 107, maybe even Friday. Tomorrow, we're going to have some clouds, probably hold us down a little bit like we saw today. Just 89 the high, 67 low. That's exactly average really for late July. It's supposed to be hot this time of the year. Third of an inch of rain at Omaha's Epley Airfield. We're in good shape this month, still dry for the year. Amounts a little lighter, Council Bluffs, Blair Valley, a couple tenths of an inch, a little heavier, Red Oak, Fall City, two thirds of an inch. Wahoo, two and a half inches of rain. Wow, early this morning, maybe you woke up from a solid sleep to hear the Rumbles of thunder and the heavy rain coming on down. Strong winds at Epley Airfield, too. It's our camera at the Livestock Exchange Building. Winds are light. It's 81, 83 in Lincoln, 80 in Fremont, 73 Harlan, Dennis, and dew points there as well. So it's a little muggy with the dew points higher tonight. Just a light southeast breeze is blowing. No rain on the radar right now. Looks like it stays pretty quiet overnight. We do have some mid and high level clouds, some more up here into South Dakota. A few showers and thunderstorms entering far western Nebraska, but too far to get here overnight. Those as they advance eastward may bring us increased cloud cover tomorrow and possibly a spotty afternoon shower. Tomorrow night, a few more showers and thunderstorms roll mainly north of our area, although we'll have to watch out for a chance down here. And then it's Wednesday, we get the sun and a bit of a south breeze and excessive heat. Again, overnight does not look like thunderstorms. Morning temperatures as good as we'll have in the lower 70s because it heats up from there. 71 the low tonight, partly cloudy. And more clouds around on Tuesday, partly to mostly cloudy. Slight chance of a shower in the afternoon should still reach the lower 90s for a high, but the excessive heat waits until Wednesday and Thursday when we get into the upper 90s to near 100. And the feels like tops out at around 105 or 107 for a few hours in the afternoon, but still quite sticky and muggy overnight. And while temperatures aren't quite so bad this weekend, still kind of hot. All right. Thanks, Bill. Yeah. Ellie's here with sports. Well, guys, it's been two years since Mitch Ballack suited up for Creighton, but the former Blue Jay was in town hosting a youth camp. Plus, his former coach, Greg McDermott, sat down with our own Matt Foster. Part two of their conversation coming up.
McDermott began coaching college hoops long before the transfer portal existed, but he knows it's not going away anytime soon. In part two of KTV sit down with Coach Mack, he discusses the portal's effect on recruiting and the key to establishing culture at Creighton. With the transfer portal and the way it is now, do you even really get a true off season? No, uh, you know, May used to be uh, a month when the guys kind of went home the first week in May after finals that the staff could kind of take a breath for, you know, three or four weeks until they came back. And now that's, you could argue that's become our one of our busiest times. Uh, you know, you're making, trying to re-recruit your own team and and figure out who's 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 here and who's gone um, at the same time really working in the transfer portal to find the right fit you know it's speed dating so to speak so you have to do a lot of research in a short period of time uh, because you want to make sure it's a culture fit it's a system fit and at the same time that young person's trying to do the same thing how has the transfer portal changed the way that you approach high school recruiting and how is high school recruiting as a whole been affected in this new era of, of the transfer portal? I, I just think you have to be uh, open and honest on the front end with the high school recruits in terms of, you know, here's the opportunity, um, here's our plan for you, our development plan, and when we see it all coming together for you. And everybody wants to play right away. Um, and, you know, I think with freshmen, you, you have to be pretty upfront about what's going to happen that first season. Otherwise, uh, if you overpromise and under under deliver, those those guys are gone. And that's just the reality of this the world we live in now. You're going to lose players. Uh, so you, you you can't get too upset about it. How much of a sell is it having a consistent established culture? The, the rules are trying to dictate that we don't build a program anymore, that we just build a new team every year. Uh, we're trying to fight that as best we can. And I'm not, you know, time will tell whether it's possible. You know, we're going to continue to try to hold on to our culture. And culture is, uh, uh, it takes a long time to build it. It doesn't take very long to lose it. And, uh, you know, fortunately, we have a leadership core on our team right now that understands how important it is. Appreciate Mac for his time. All right, former Blue Jay guard Mitch Ballack was back in Omaha today hosting his first ever youth camp in the Metro. <laughs> Ballack's had camps in his hometown of Eudora, Kansas the last few years, but said it was important for him to have one in the place that he called home for so long. And in just a short amount of time that I was there, he was putting those kids to work <laughs> with a lot of dribbling drills. A lot of three-point shots. Thanks yeah, so right. <laughs> Your final forecast after the break.